Hello everybody and welcome back to the next video. This time we're gonna talk about INVOKER! Let's just have a quick look at the spells. Yes, Invoker has 10 spells and that's quite a lot and you will need a lot of practice to use all of them in game and to understand them. Let's start with Cold Snap. Cold Snap is basically a mini stun that can proc over time. The duration depends on your course level but the biggest benefit of the spell is basically you can cancel TPs, you can stun people, you can annoy them, and you're healing quite a lot. If you're just watching the spell right now, for every Quas proc you are healing for 112 HP. The next spell is Ghost Walk. Ghost Walk basically makes you invis, can slow your enemies, and you're gonna regen a lot of mana and a lot of HP. Plus, at the minute 20 to 25 minute mark, you're gonna even get movement speed on your hero, up to 20%. As you wish. I go. The next spell is Ice Wall. Ice Wall is basically a wall that slows enemies and deals damage. Number 4 on the spells, EMP. EMP is just burning mana and dealing damage to enemies. Next one is Tornado. Tornado is basically a tornado that lifts you up and that deals damage. The next one on the list is Alacrity. Alacrity is basically giving you attack speed and attack damage. You almost made it through the first step. Next spell is Defeating Blast. Defeating Blast is basically a blast you just throw in front of yourself. It has like 1000 distance range and deals damage. Plus it knocks the enemies back and it disarms them. Next one is Sunstrike. Sunstrike is an area where you can deal damage with a delay of 1.7 seconds and a radius of 175. The next one is Forge Spirit. Forge Spirit are basically one or two homies at some point that will help you at last setting, that can tank something and that deal damage and reduce armor of the enemies. And the last one is Chaos Meteor. An insanely strong meteor that falls from the sky and it deals a lot of damage. I'm pretty sure you're wondering now, how do I practice the spells and the combos as well? I can recommend you two things. The first thing is you practice it in a lobby against bots or like being alone in a lobby, or you just try out this custom game right there. I've tried it. It's actually decent-ish. Like you will get an idea on how to play in Walker, how to use the combos. The game is just like forcing you to use the combos as well, and you will get like a basic understanding of the spells and you can practice there for free. If you watch the video to this point, Congratulations, you've done the tutorial, and now we're gonna talk about important stuff on a walker you need to do. The first point we're talking about is the skill build. Please guys, don't play Exod and Walker. It is not good, and Quas Wax and Walker is so much better. So I'm gonna recommend you always maxing your Quas and your Wax. And if you want to, you can get a casual point at level 10 on Exord. Not earlier, just get it on level 10. It is the safest play, plus you're gonna like benefit way more out of it just because your Q and your W are gonna deal so much damage in combination with your item build. The key item for that is definitely Vessel. And I will recommend you buying Vessel every single game. Just because it's guaranteed that you are going for a Quasvex build and Vessel is basically the biggest damage buff with this. So please build a Vessel, travels, then maybe a Blink Dagger, and then you're gonna go for the shard. And the reason behind the shard is basically the shard is so strong and it deals so much damage. If you just look at it, you deal so much damage, you slow the enemies, you pull them into you, and you don't even need to use so many spells anymore. You can literally just use like these two spells and you just hit people. It is so much damage. Trust me, it is so much damage. And it works every single game. Like you don't you don't need to be like a giga chat on a walker. You basically just need to be like okay-ish and like understanding what you need to do. And in order to understand this, you need a lot of practice. But 
my recommendation for that is definitely stop trying like being a miracle. Play like basic and walker. Play quas vex only and sometimes you use like different spells. Try to use all of them but don't feel like you need to do everything. I can guarantee you if you are the person that uses tornado, cold snap, EMP and alacrity on your carry you can already like win 55% of your games minimum if you're just doing these four things. I'm not saying you should only do them, but for the start, if like 10 spells are too much for you, focus on these four spells. A very important point is actually, if you use your spells, make sure you are using Wax or Exord. And the reason behind that is basically, if you use Wax, your cooldowns are getting lower. If you just look the, at the cooldown right now on my EMP, it's 25 5 seconds. If I don't use my Wax, it's 30 seconds. So whenever you use a single spell, the cooldown is always lower than it should be. So please abuse that and make sure you're always playing and using spells if you have your wax on. I'm not saying you always need to do that, but it's very good. And the same example also works for Exhort. You have your Aghanims, you want to use Cataclysm. The best way of using that is basically if you are full on Exhort and you're using the Sunstrikes because you are dealing the full potential of damage. You're getting 7% spell amplification for one ball of Exord. Or max level, of course, but still, just think about it. It's literally 21% spell amplification for free. This is better than Akaya. Which positions should you play Invoker? In my opinion, the best positions for Invoker right now, basically mid lane and position 4. But you can play him wherever you want. It's up to you. This hero can be like an all-arounder and he doesn't really care. But the best positions are definitely middle and four. You should definitely follow this build with the Vessel into Midas, into Boots of Travel, into Blink and then a Shard. You can skip the Blink or the Travels and go for, like, for something else like a Shard or Blink first. But this is like my biggest recommendation. And after these items you can go for like BKB, you can go for Aghanims, it depends on the game. But these key items are so strong and they're gonna buff up your game so much. And the biggest reason behind the Midas is basically just you don't wanna fall off. A lot of the times I had a problem, I got a vessel, I was roaming around, I was killing people and I felt good, but I didn't got any experience. So I just buy the Midas after the vessel to just like follow the enemies with experience. Otherwise you're gonna fall back a lot and you're gonna feel kind of useless. If you want to be a part of the next Q&A, feel free to join my Discord. The link is in the description. See you there and welcome to the community. Let's start with the first question. What kind of maniacs play in Walker? That question is pretty simple. People with a minimum of like 10 arms and 5 brains. Question number 2. What are the ways to play in Walker in different positions? Is he exclusively a middle? Or how would you play him differently elsewhere? My recommendation for that is basically in Walker is an all-arounder and you can play him anywhere you want and in my opinion you should play him the same way on every single position like at the end or at some point you're gonna be the person that either deals a lot of damage with like cataclysm or like your spells or you're gonna annoy the people or you're gonna be the person that just like alacrities your position one you're gonna annoy the enemies with your spells that's it you can do this on position 2, you can do this on position 5 and 4 as well, it doesn't really matter. At some point you're gonna be basically the Cataclysm bot or the Alacrity bot for your position 1. So you can play him everywhere, but if you play him on support I wouldn't recommend you like going Midas and go more of a fighting build and like keep running at enemies as much as you can. Question number 3. When do you go Quaswex or Exhort from a lineup objective perspective? I will recommend you go Quaswex and never go Exhort right now. Exhort is not good and Quas Wax is like way more active and it, it deals more damage than Exhort because the problem with Exhort is just you want to sit AFK middle but instead with Quas Wax you can just run around the map, annoy people, just destroy them on the map. And the biggest benefit of like Quas Wax right now is just a ghost walk. Like you get the mana region, you get the HP region. And that's basically you sustain in mid lane. And with Exhort you do not get that. And that's like the biggest problem on that as well. Next question. How to scale with gold and how to solo kill potential. Your scaling with gold is pretty easy. You need items like Hex, Blink, Refresher, Agadims and all that stuff. And with that 
your solo kill potential will come. But even if you have a shard, vessel and very high level on quas wax, you will actually kill people just with like one cold snap, one EMP and like two or three rack legs. It deals so much damage. Like you will just get so much damage just with like these cheap items and that's why I am like recommending them because they are just like so cheap and they do so much for you and they buff your damage by a lot. And the last question to my boy Silas, how to recover from a failing gank or a losing lane as Wax? Alright, first of all, it's pretty hard to lose a lane with a walker right now, especially if you go across Vex. Like, your sustainability is so strong that you can't, like, really lose. Only if you get, like, ganked, like, five times by three people, sure. And if you miss your ganks and it doesn't work out, then you can always, like, think about an earn plus a minus after that. If it's, like, really, really bad. And you need to stay middle. Like, if you feel like two or three ganks didn't work out, try to stay on a lane. And don't leave. Only leave if you see like a free TP with like a few kills, but otherwise just stay AFK on a lane and just sit there. Like be annoying for your enemies. And if you just sit there like a tower, they can't really gank you, they can't really kill you, and they feel like pressured. Whenever the enemy mid lane is leaving, you can push a tower. So just think about these things. Whenever you have a bad lane, you need to recover and like sit in lane AFK or get like one or two ganks. If this doesn't work out, Sit AFK in your lane, just hit creeps and farm. There's literally almost nothing that outscales Invoker right now. The only hero maybe that outscales him is Broodmother, but Broodmother's not getting played, so you can't really lose.